this is part four in my video series on inspecting an M119 engine. If you recall in part three, I went over the inspection process of the distributor cap, rotor, wires, and so on. And when I took those distributor cap covers off, I saw something that really concerned me. Now let's review. Take a look at this plug here. Can you see the wiring insulation? It's starting to flake off. And that was not the only thing I noticed when I started looking more closely at the engine wiring, and that's the subject of this part in this inspection series. You want to thoroughly inspect all the wiring in and around the engine compartment on these engines. So let me show you what else I saw, and you can see why my suspicions were growing by the minute. I'm looking specifically at the upper engine wiring harness. You have a number of plugs right here at the front and it goes through this loom and runs across this right side of the intake manifold down along the rear of the valve cover and then up through here and if you notice right in this location is a big plug and you can literally unplug the wiring harness. So it didn't look too bad in this area, but right in this here on this plastic cover, first off I noticed this green wire. <laughs> That's not a factory wire. That's some sort of makeshift ground. And then I'm looking here and there's a connector and there's a bunch of silicone. And then I started noticing this kind of white goo coming out from underneath this plastic cover for the harness. So, you know, I don't think it's going to be pretty when I take this off, but let me pull it off, we'll come back, and together we can see just how bad this really is. The first thing I did is I took one of these plugs that had caused me the initial suspicion, and I peeled it back, and look at this. I, I mean, the deeper you go, the worse it gets. None of the insulation is even holding onto this copper wiring. Wow. Then I went and took this plastic cover off and look in the world <laughs> what I found here. Someone had come in here with some sort of a, a silicone, uh, some sort of a glue and had kind of tried to glue all this together to keep it from shorting out. So obviously one of the previous owners to this car had taken it somewhere and they thought they were going to do a temporary fix. That's a real interesting way to try to save a bad wiring harness. But you know, it just didn't st stop here. I thought, well, okay, it's heat related, so anything on the engine is going to be, you know, really deteriorated. But as I come across here, look at all these wires. It's just crumbling. And I thought, well, you know, maybe you could come in here and splice it and run new wires, but it didn't end here either. I went up to the wiring near the plug here and I peeled back some of the covering and look at this. Look at the amount of cracking. It's not quite as bad, but you have severe cracking of the insulation here. So we're talking wiring harness from the plug over to everything on the top of the engine is bad and will have to be replaced. So let's talk a little bit more about this problem. First off, I have to tell you, I am amazed that this car ran so well before I pulled it into the shop to begin this inspection. Literally, there were no signs as far as misfire or stumbling. I had a little bit of ticking noise that was related to that ignition wire, but I, when I drove this car, I didn't, I didn't sense anything wrong with a wiring harness, although I knew it was suspicious just because of the year and model. Okay, and if you're interested in finding out more about the history of this wiring harness problem and what years and models it applies to, be sure and check out my other alert video where I talk more specifically about this on a broader scale, not just the M119 engine. So what are my options? Well, I, I can almost guarantee you it's not going to run now. If we move it out of the shop, it's going to be pushed. Uh, once I start messing around and pulling insulation off, I'm going to have things shorting all over the place. And you know, on another note, this is kind of a dangerous situation. 
if you're driving one of these cars and you don't know that you have this kind of a problem, I mean, there can become a point where wires start connecting and contacting each other and your engine will literally just quit. It may backfire a few times and just quit. And this could be on the freeway or coming up an on-ramp or something. So if you do have one of these cars that this issue applies to is primarily uh, 1991 up to about 1996, depending upon the model and the VIN and the date of production, you need to be concerned about this, okay? And that's why I would refer you back to my other alert video on this subject. But here are your options. You could repair this yourself. And I know people who've done this. You have to be, uh, you have to enjoy this type of work. You, ha you have to enjoy wiring and soldering. Because if you do do this, you have to do one wire at a time and keep track of everything. So you have soldering to do, you have routing to do. It's very time consuming, but it's not real expensive. You're just out the cost of a bunch of wire. And I do know, I think there's a fellow that actually rebuilds these, although in some cases the cost is comparable uh, to a new harness on some models. Other models it's hard to get or they're very expensive. It might be a better option to have it repaired. And the, of course, the other option is just buy a new one from the dealer and that uh, on these models it's going to run $750 to $900 at the time we film this video. But there are options for used ones. Now, if you do buy a used one, you have to be very careful. You want to make sure it is an updated wiring harness, something that has a date on it. A lot of these have Delphi tags on them that have been replaced over the years, and there's a lot of them out there that have been replaced. So from a qualified uh, recycler with a reputation who can verify the tag date, let's say it's a 2009 replacement or a 2006 replacement, you might be okay. You know, you, you know the wiring's gonna be soft, it's not gonna be uh, coming apart like the old harness. Obviously, it's not gonna be 100% like a brand new one from the dealer, but you can, you can save some money by going the used route. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and order in a replacement wiring harness, and while I'm waiting patiently for that harness to arrive, we're gonna move on to the next part in this inspection series, and I'm gonna talk about inspecting for oil leaks. One thing I failed to mention is that there is another part of this wiring harness fiasco that you may have to deal with, and that's the lower engine wiring harness. It's the thing that's connect the wiring connected to the alternator and some of the oil sensors down low inside the engine compartment. This is much more difficult to get to. I'm going to have to inspect that. I'll probably wait until I get up on the lift to go after that one. The, that harness is, is a little more difficult to replace but not as expensive. And oh, by the way, if you're a DIY mechanic and you're thinking, well, how hard is it to replace it? It's, it's only an hour and a half to two hour job, a Saturday afternoon job, as long as you're careful and you, you notice I'm not gonna take the old one off until the new one arrives. And when I put it on, I will tr trace everything and you would need to do the same thing if you replace it. Just take your time, make sure all the plugs go in the same place when you pull the old one off. And this is something you can do yourself. So I just wanted to warn you about the lower wiring harness also. That could be a problem as well. And I'll wait though. I'm gonna wait until I get a chance to really inspect that one before I order in a replacement there too. So don't be afraid to tackle this job yourself if you have a car where this is a problem. 